Hey everybody, welcome to my usual me, and welcome to an Atlas update. Ladies and gentlemen, we were just playing uh, Life is Feudal the MMO, and this popped up on my screen. I wanted to address this immediately. I wanted to go live, and I almost went live with this because I was so hot, so hot about what happened with this new update that they came out with. Now, today, Jet and his people, they came out with a, uh, they did on, on Twitch, they did a, a, a captain's log. This is to number 22, March Milestone, and server, official server wipe, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to wipe the servers. That's right. So, I right now, I want you to tell me in the comment section below, do you think this was needed? Do you think that you, this is wanted? Do you think this is necessary? Actually, don't, I don't want to hear about the last part. Because it's necessary. And the reason it's necessary is because with all the glitches and all the dupes and all the, all, all the exploits and all the stuff that have gotten into the game, they have to wipe everything. I know they have to. I knew they were going to have to. I just didn't know when it was going to happen. So I held off on my Atlas series, ladies and gentlemen. We had four episodes recorded. And I held off because something in the back of my mind said, hold off on this, don't get started, because if you continue and you do a long series, you're gonna have to cut it in the middle, and I didn't wanna do that. And this is why it, I, I, my, I say I went by my gut, and I didn't put out the first episode because I didn't wanna disappoint you guys. I know some of you guys wanna watch you know, Atlas, I get that, but this came out. Now let's look at this, okay? Primary milestones, world redesign, claim revamp, new war system. Ship of the Damned, let's see, let's go up here. Okay, Ship of the Damned, Submarine, Quality of Life, Giant Crab Curses, Secondary Milestones. All right, I watched this, I watched their stream, and, I, and, and, and it is what it is. They've explained a lot of things. I wanted to make sure I was up to speed with what they were talking about in here. And they said, but there's a lot that we're going to put into the into the uh, captain's log that we're not going to cover here. So there's a lot here that they didn't cover in the in the video. So it says in previous logs we stated that we would be visiting some major design aspects of the game, which make it more accessible for smaller groups and solo players, along with reducing the steep climb necessary to experience some of the later game content. There's a lot that we want to do over the coming months, and this will update. And this update will be the first of many to help resolve these problems. Let me stop right there. Stop right there. Probably means they're going to wipe again and again and again until they get it right. Fact of the matter is, they have not. They don't have their, their their systems in place to keep these problems from happening. They're trying to make it happen, and we are so good. I'm talking to you, the person watching this video. We have played. Arc for so long, and we are so good at exploiting games and 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 using glitches and using uh, cheats and whatnot that these guys just can't hardly keep up. They just don't even know how to. I mean, they they saw what we've done in Arc, and they did their best to fix it. But then we all of us come from Arc and come into Atlas, and it's it's like it's like kids in a candy store. You 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 can't help but but get some broken jars it's gonna happen so these guys are gonna i mean it's a, and it's and they said before they said this is not a finished product this is a work in progress we and and they, they, i knew they were gonna wipe i knew they were going to wipe at least once it's probably now i'm looking at this i'm thinking it's going to be four or five times four or five times in the next year they're going to wipe they're going to have to. So please note that the wipe will not be forced on unofficial servers. However, the old claim flags will disappear, and you'll have to replace them or allow them to naturally populate. So they're, they're, going, to, they're going to redo the whole claim system, guys. With the release of this first milestone, we will be wiping all of our official networks. This is not a decision we've taken lightly. However, we believe, based on a number of reasons, that this will be the best move for the game moving forward. First of all, the changes we are planning for this update are huge. We are completely de redesigning the world layout introducing new island types and biomes adding new playable areas beneath and upon the ocean along with completely revamping the claim system they're going to actually add more islands guys they're going to add they said one to two more islands per grid so they said that people didn't have enough room to to populate so they're going to add more islands so there's going to be less distance in between islands because there's going to be more in a grid due to the impact of these changes we believe a wipe is the best course of action so that you can experience the update in a fresh environment without being influenced by any of our legacy or depreciated code. Right, if they try to write new code on top of old code, guys, it's not going to work. They're going to conflict, and then we're gonna, it'll break the game, considering how large this map is. So, I get it. They have to do it. 
The swipe will allow us to see whether the changes we're making are headed in the right direction or whether we need to sit back as a team and further adjust our design our game. They're going to have to. They're going to have to adjust it again and again and again. We believe that these systems, which we are going to discuss in more detail, are some of the most important and core aspects of Atlas. Using your feedback, insight, and creativity, we want to build on the foundation of the game throughout early access, and we're willing to make the changes necessary, no matter how large, to get them to work. Of course they do, because if it's broken, we won't play it. Whether that means more content, complete redesigns, or wiping the network when the big changes have come in. Second, since Atlas launched as an early access title, there have been a number of bugs, exploits, and patches made in the game that have been, had a significant impact on the state of the persistent world. A number of players that have benefited or suffered grievances due to these various sense fixed issues, whether they were taking advantage of crafting exploits, alpha babies, duping, or had their boats sunk by Gatling of Ship of the Dam. I remember that happened, man. Gatling Ship of the Dam was brief, but brutal. I mean, it's like, if you guys aren't familiar with that, it was, it was, it was quite the thing. Um, Picture, picture Gatling guns on a ship of the damned. As such, being a game that is focused on players building an empire, claiming and ruling over what's theirs, and being the hero or villain they were meant to be, we believe that a wipe is necessary to put everybody back on an even playing field. All right, I'm not going to talk anymore about this. Um, this part of the the, uh, the update, we're just going to go ahead and scroll on down this. Uh, if you have ever played Atlas, this is their this is their gift to you, right here. That's right. If you've ever played Atlas. This right here is their gift, not the man, not the man. I'm talking about the hat. We get a legacy hat. Oh, my God. A founder's hat, a skin that only us that have played Atlas before get. It's, okay, thanks. Thanks. That's all I have to say about that. But I want to know what you have to say about that in the comment section below, so please. All right, March Milestone, here we go. World of Design, Claim Revamp, New War System, Ship of the Dam, Submarine, Quality of Life Improvements, Giant Cram, Curses, Guillotine, Player Shops, Vitamin Rebalance, Bug Squashing, and Cosmetics. All right, so with this patch, the uh, team have a number of priority, uh, primary and secondary objectives. With our primary and bi the biggest changes, we hope to address the following. Player not, players not being able to find and land to build a base on both PvP and PvE. Offline rating, incentivizing large companies to work with smaller and solo groups, players not being able to connect or spawn on a server. We recognize these are not all the only aspects of Atlas which we need to, need to improve. There are problems with new player experience, how punishing it is to recover after you've been defeated, server performance during large epic battles, viability of creatures, weapons, boat builds, etc., the list can go on and on on these things that we are planning to address and more in the coming months ahead. This patch, however, it will primarily be focused on the points we mentioned above. Yeah, 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 you keep talking about this. General rules. Players can now build anywhere. Anywhere without owning a settlement. And that means a settlement is an island which has been claimed. There is only one flag per island. And that is known as the settlement. Only one flag per island. And then you are only allowed to have so many flags per company. Okay? Only one, only one flag per island, and the, the company is the owner of that settlement. But anybody can build there if they let them, right? So I let's, let's say I put a flag down, I own this island now. I can let you come and, and build. You will pay the taxes. Everything that you chop down, everything that, you, that you, you mine, everything that you gather, all that stuff, will go into the bank as part of the payment for this flag. And you will be a part of the settlement. You're not a part of my company, but you're a part of the settlement. Now, if I don't like what you're doing, I can boot your ass off right now and destroy all your things. All you have to do is say a wrong word to me and I can get rid of you. Just like that. Um, but if I let you live there, it's cheaper for me to keep my flag. And if I can't pay my flag, well, guess what? Then the settlement dissolves and I no longer own the island. And you can only own an island if no one lives there to begin with, then you can populate the island. So if someone lives on the island, you have to extricate them. You have to get rid of them. So there's that. There'd be a hard limit. Okay, so islands are given a rank based on their location, size, and value, how valuable they are. These rankings will be used to pr determine upkeep as well as identify the top 10 companies, which will be a sum of all the items that the company has claimed. By the way, guys, when I say things out of what is in here, it's because I heard it up here okay 
I'm going to put the link down. It's down in the description right now. You can go watch this video yourself. And this is what Jat, what Jat was saying. And so you can see what, that what I'm adding to this is what he was saying, what they were saying during the, uh, the live stream. So, okay. Anyway, so structures that are built on the islands or that are not settlements can be raided at any moment. So, in other words, if you are on an island and it's not a settlement, it doesn't have a flag, it's PvP all the time. Okay? But settlements are protected. You, as a settlement owner, give a window of time where you can be raided. It's just like in Life is Field of the MMO where we have judgment hour. And there's a certain amount of time where anybody can raid you. Anybody can raid you. Right? They said it might be eight hours a day. Maybe it's, maybe it's eight hours a week. I don't know. They haven't decided. They haven't decided, so they haven't told us. But I'm expecting it's going to be either eight hours a day or eight hours per week. Uh, one day during the week, uh, you know, during an eight-hour window. But you can also go and you can, you can buy a special war coin from a vendor, and you can declare war on someone outside of their, 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 their hour of judgment or their hours of judgment, and you can go ahead and raid them at that time. But you, but you have to tell them ahead of time so they can prepare. So there's going to be a, you're going to have to wait a certain amount of time so there's no surprise attacks. So tell me in the comment section below what you think about that. Fog of War and Shroud of War have been eliminated so the entire atlas will be shown to everyone. I like that a lot. World Map will now show the name of an island which can be changed by the settlement owners which, who settled, who a settlement is owned by, the current tax rate, and the current war status of the island. Islands will have colored overlay for ownership, owned by you, an ally, or non-ally. NPC crews on offensive and defensive seated structures will no longer count toward the tame limit whilst seated. So when you have your, 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 uh, your crew seated, when they're not like standing up and, and, and repairing your ship, they're not considered part of your tame limit. But once, if you're like fixing your ship, they consider, they're considered part of your tames. So I don't know what's going to happen. If you seat your, let's just say for the sake of argument, you have your character seated, you I mean your crew seated, you go up to your tame limit, and then you try to unseat them, they probably won't let you unseat them, I expect. Company limit has been reduced to 250 members, guys. Group ranks have now been increased to 10. Alliance changes have now been logged, or will now be logged in the company log. You can sort the company log to display entries from top to bottom. So you can sort your stuff, okay. A new group setting, which will grant the owner permission to, to, for company members, which can be set by the owner and unset by the owner. Uh, members with the owner permission will not be able to remove the actual company owner from the company. So, yeah, I, you, I can give you access to everything except kicking me out if I own the island. Unless I want to be kicked out, then I could promote you, or I'd have to actually remove myself. An alliance now only can, has a maximum of four companies. So at the max, at the max, because it used to be, it used to be 500 members for a company. Now it's dropped to 250. And now you only have, you can only have an alliance with four companies. So at the max, a group is going to have be able to have what 1,250 people. A company can only be in two different alliances at a time. Oh whoa, what? An alliance can contain four companies. But a company can only be in two different alliances at one time. Okay. That's confusing to me, but maybe you can tell me in the comment section below what that meant. Claim flags. Uh, see, claim flags have been eliminated. You can't claim the ocean, guys. No more, no more. Claim flags can no longer be used to steal structure ownership on land because there's only one land claim. That's it. There's only one flag on, per island. If it has a flag, then somebody owns it. If it doesn't have a flag, you can claim it. Unless there's somebody living there. Like claim flags can no longer be merged into other companies. There's be a hard limit on the total number of cl claim flags per company. For example, 20 numbers can be adjusted. Uh, numbers will be adjusted. That's 20 isn't the number they used uh, er, in the video. So uh, I think the number they used in the video was 5. A claim flag cannot be placed. So it's going to be between 5 and 20, guys. A claim flag cannot be placed without a tax bank. You have to put a tax bank down because it's just like rust, Right. It's going to have you, you. It's going to cost you X, and, and the tax bank is basically going to be your um, your cupboard, right? Your cupboard. So you have your cupboard uh, that you uh, that you you put your materials in to make sure that your stuff doesn't decay. 
if it's if you don't have any materials inside your bank then your stuff will start to decay and once it decays enough your claim flag gets destroyed and that's that so it's just like rust in that respect so now they've taken uh they've taken uh, elements from life is futile the mmo and they've taken uh, uh elements from rust and they put it into their game is what they've done claiming an island will take a fixed amount of time plus an additional amount per claim flag owned. For example, one hour claim plus a one hour plus one hour per owned claim flag, numbers can be adjusted. So the more islands you have, the longer it will take you to claim another island. Declaiming will always take a fixed amount of time. For example, for example, two hours, no, numbers can be adjusted. They keep saying this because they don't know what they want to do. They're going to try something, and if it doesn't work, they're going to adjust it. If we think if we really hate it, then they're going to change it again. So, and it's going to be, it's going to be the vocal uh, minority that are going to, that are going to, the most vocal people are going to be the ones that they hear. That and the role players, because uh, Jat mentioned uh, Katie Rue in, 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 in this live stream. He listened, Jat listens to, to, uh, to the role players. So, you know, the role players say, hey, look, man, this is not working. He listens to them and Jat filters it down through his people. And then the, the then the really vocal uh, uh, PVPers and PVEers, the, the few PVEers that talk, they you know he listens to they, then they listen to them. So it's a mi amalgamation of those vocal people. You know what I mean? So claim flag upkeep. Claim flag to now have an upkeep cost which is paid from the tax bank. Upkeep cost will be an assortment of resources. Upkeep cost will scale on the size of the island, total number of claim flags the company has, and how many different companies players are building on the island. So the more people you have, the more expensive it is. However, if you are a company that's allowing people to build on your land, it's cheaper. So it behooves you to bring people in that aren't in your company, which just means that companies will be smaller and they'll put the rest of their people on the island as regular players to make it cheaper for themselves. You see where I'm going with this? All right. Players can only place items in a tax bank that can go toward upkeep. Claim flags have a grace period after successful claim to allow resources to gather in a tax bank before upkeep is charged. Let me go back to the last one, though. So I, I, if I'm reading this right, players can only place items into a tax bank that go toward upkeep. Maybe you can't take it back out. You can't use that as, as, a, as, a, whole, as, a, as a storage container. You, once you put it in, it probably won't be able to come back out. The claim flag will visualize if the upkeep will, will not be met, so the players are able to contribute directly to the tax bank. The tax bank will now stack resources like a ship resource box, which is probably going to be unlimited. Settlement owners must set a window of vulnerability, currently set to nine hours. I said eight, it's nine. Okay, I didn't read that. All right, where island is rateable. Outside of this window, player structures and ships will not take damage from other players. I want to know what the circumference of a, a ship safe, safety is going to be. Like if I, if, you know, if, if I live on the island, do all I have to do is throw down a, a sleeping bag and all of a sudden I'm considered a member of that island? If I, have my, if I park my ship uh, right, right within uh, the bubble of safety that's around that island, can I, is, is my ship safe? Is it going to be invulnerable unless they're, so can I, as a, just some outsider, um, just come in, sneak in at night, put down a sleeping bag or put down a little tiny baby shack hidden back, you know, or maybe on top of a mountain or something. And, uh, and then all of a sudden all my gear is on my ship. Can I do that in multiple places? Probably, probably. And then my ship is safe. So I can actually live on my ship. I don't have to worry about, uh, uh, you know, doing much of anything and my ship will be safe. So long as I'm not around when, when, when war breaks out. There will be a timer on players before they receive the invulnerability status. Oh, yeah. so, so, okay, so you'd have to be there for a certain amount of time. You'd have to have your, your structure down for a certain amount of time. Anchored boats or dock boats will follow the same rules if they are in the radius of a settlement. Non-settlement owners who have cannons on ships are, and are anchored shall not be allowed to fire cannons outside of wartime. Settlement owners can freely damage other characters and structures on their land. Solomon owners can set taxes on their land, which will automatically be deposited into the tax bank. Structures that are built on a settlement, which do not belong to the settlement owner, will have a decay timer. Player-run shops, which are placed on islands, will also be taxed by a settlement owner. So not only do you have to, do you, are you getting taxed by whatever you harvest, but you're also getting taxed by whatever you sell. 
double taxation without resp- re- representation. Declaring war, players can purchase a war token. I talked about this earlier, which can be used to declare war on an island. When war is declared on an island, players must schedule a, a time in the future, between three days to one week. Only one war can be scheduled at once. There's a cooldown after a war is ended before another war can be declared on that island. They don't even have a time on that. They don't know how long they're going to let that be. It's probably going to be a, 20, a 48-hour period, I imagine. Maybe 72. Between 48 and 72, I expect. Declaring war is per island, and so it's possible to declare war against multiple islands at the same time. The UI will indicate whether an island is experiencing wartime soon or is currently in wartime, and wars will last a fixed period of time. When an island has been deemed warlike, building rules no longer apply. After the war has ended, the normal rules are enacted once again. So, yeah, when you're, when you're at war, it's all, it all goes, man. It's PvP all the way around. Anything can be destroyed. Anything can be uprooted. Anything, anybody can be killed. Doesn't matter. And then when now when war ends, then that's it. That's it. You uh, you have to wait for the next war cycle. Settlement build rules. Only the owner of a settlement will be able to build offensive structures. Now check this out, guys. Check this out. Only the owner of a settlement will be able to build offensive structures, mortars, cannons, swivels on their islands outside of wartime. Other companies can build defensive structures like a puckle at any time. Only company, other companies can build offensive structures only during wartime. Outside of wartime, these structures are non-functional, inactive, and unusable. So we go into war, or we're about to ready to go into war, and I build 20 cannons, 50 mortars. I have all the ammunition, and we're ready to go. And then all of a sudden war happens. Boom! All right, we start firing, bam, 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 and then it, all of a sudden, war's over. We're invulnerable again. I can't use my cannons. I can't use my mortars. Which, at first when I heard this, I thought it was a really crappy idea. But it really, it doesn't really matter. If you're invulnerable, why do you need them anyway? That, now, this is on land, right? This isn't on your boat. This is on land. Why do you even need this this stuff anyway? If you're on, if you're if you're on land, now I now the problem with this is if you're not able to make them, then you can't make them for your boats for your ships. If you're if you're a guy who comes to an island and you're brand new and this guy owns the island, you'll either have to purchase the cannons from this person if you can get them to do it, so you can put them on your boat, or you're gonna have to wait till you're in wartime to make them to put on your boat. By that time, it's it's almost too late because you. I mean, you might have a little bit of time, but you're you're worried about other things than than arming your boat when this happens. So, I, I guess you could sail your boat out into the ocean, make your cannons, put them on, put them down, and then come back. But the whole point is building your shipyard, building your boat. Unless shipyards aren't affected, if if shipyards are immune to this to this. Uh, this problem, I mean, this, this this functionality, then it'll be fine. But I don't think it. I don't think it will be. I think it's going to be. I think we're going to have a problem here. Anyway, well, we'll see. Notification system. Players can sign up for email notifications related to company log activity. So you can get an email. Oh, you're being attacked, by the way. Company logs that have a physical in-world location shall now include a, the grid and GPS. E.g., a boat was sunk on K5 at 5050. So you can go back and you can get your stuff. Or you find your stuff. Lawless servers will continue to operate like normal. No islands on this service can be claimed. R- reduced structure placement rules. It says uh, reduced structure placement rules. So they're making it easier to, to build on the lawless servers, but you can't claim them. So, okay. And damage GK added over time on all structures. So you will have to have a structure. It's not going to be an actual bank, but it'll, it'll be like a, like a, a material shed. You're going to have to put on your property or next to your house to keep your house from decaying. That way, people can't spam a bunch of stuff, and the, and eventually, or if they do spam stuff, it'll eventually it'll just all decay and it'll go away, so it's not permanent. So a PVE network, no, okay, that's the PVE uh, servers are all different, guys. They, there's no claim flags, damage decay over time, added all structures, so it's the same. That's the same, uh, just like Rust, just like on the PVP servers, and a new auto repair structure, which will players will need to. Uh, need to upkeep to prevent structures from being destroyed by decay. They're calling it an auto repair structure. So it's a it's a resource shed. It's an actual it's an actual structure you have to build. 
World redesign. Actually, before I start with this, guys, tell me what you think about this right now in the comment section below. I want to know. I want you to tell me. Do you think this is a good idea? Do you think this is a bad idea? I want, I'm putting it over to you. Uh, let me know exactly what you think. This is going to be kind of a long video, and I, 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 this is 12.30 o'clock. It's 12.30 in the morning for me, so I've been up all night. All right, so this milestone will, will also introduce some world changes to the Atlas itself. The overall objective of these changes is to provide players with more land to use for their bases, as well as a general update of our current biomes and introducing new areas to explore. Over 200 islands added to the network, approximately one additional island per grid. I said two. He said two in the video. So, um, but I guess it's only one. Players can now set any server at, as their home server following the wipe and the potential for free ports to be overloaded with temporarily enabling setting any Atlas server as your home server. So pretty much whichever one you click on that you can get into is the one that you're going to be able to, be, uh, to spawn on. And that was because that, they're trying to get around that problem we had at the very beginning of the original launch. You know what I'm saying? Where no one could get in for like three days straight. Additionally, we'll most likely increase us respawn on the current server option too. Full notes for the March milestone. What the heck is Oh, this is that submarine. Now, this is a sore spot for me, guys. This is this almost. This is almost, matter of fact, Monogard, my gaming partner, and I, we talked about this, and it, um, it, it made me not want to play this game. It made me want to de, just uninstall it. Um, if I could tear it out of my computer and throw it away in the garbage can, it probably would have been thrown in the garbage can. And the reason for that is this damn submarine. All right, full notes for March Milestone. New vehicle submarine. Explore the depths of the ocean in this small scouting submarine. No weapons on board, but does have a claw arms to help harvest ocean floor and explore demolished shipwrecks. The submarine can also light up its surroundings and will require fuel to run. The fuel cost will be based on movement, so the more one moves, the more it uses. Additionally, there would be a higher cost for movement that is lateral, which is forward or backward, compared to the longitudinal, longi longitudinal which is upwards or downwards. The submarine will not outclass ships, as you'll need to pay a lot in fuel cost to be able to travel far. The intention is to use these in underwater deep diving scenarios. It will be unlocked and can be driven by defeating the Kraken. Though players will be able to have, be, be passengers in other users' submarines without having completed the Kraken quest. You have to kill the Kraken. You have to complete the Kraken quest. I call shenanigans. I call bullshit is what I call. You know what? Apologies for calling bullshit where bullshit sits and I'm smelling it. You promised us the submarine. Oh yeah, we'll give you the submarine. Oh wait, yeah, but you have to defeat the Kraken. Oh, what do you have to do with the, uh, to defeat the Kraken? You have to go to all and get all the stones and you, then and then you have to get about a hundred people together to get together uh, on the server as a server event so you can summon the Kraken so you can defeat the Kraken. Horse shit. New environment. Deep ocean trench. A new area to explore. Guarded by powerful underwater creatures and home to the new giant crab, which we can't enjoy unless we have the submarine. I mean, okay. We have a dive suit, right? Big deal. So there, none of the creatures when you're in the dive suit are going to hurt you, right? They can't hurt you. I mean, they're not going to aggro on you unless you attack them first. But how can I get inside the buildings if I'm in the damn dive suit when you need the platform to get out of the dive suit? It makes no sense. Give me a portable oxygen tank of some kind. Then I'll be all right with it. I'll take, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll dive down and I'll use, I'll use portable oxygen if there's any way of having portable oxygen so I can get down here and I can explore this beautiful new place. The trench will be found on Golden Age ruined servers and contain eight new power stones which can be used to unlock to fight a more difficult version of the Kraken. It'll be in an area where players can find new resources, new creatures, such as the crab, with more to come in the future. New creatures, the giant crab, it can, it can, it can heavy loads along with players tames and wild creatures so you can tame it i don't know how you're going to tame it that's going to be interesting but only if you can get down there to tame it you probably have to beat the crap out of it until it's unconscious with the submarine which you have to have you have to defeat the kraken to get that is a that is a deal breaker for me you understand me the crab can be found in the okay let's see uh no okay this one i like though 
New, new environment. Eastern Tundra has its own divisional design, no longer using the Western Tundra style. They're going to put in the, uh, some new some new aesthetics, guys. Some new, and It looks different. Hopefully it has different resources. That'd be cool. But probably not. Maybe, though. But it's got, they've got some new islands that look different. That's kind of nice. They have the guillotine. I saw them test this out. It was pretty cool. You can get down to when you're, when you're in the guillotine, you can look around. You can still talk and everything. and You can talk smack or whatever and right before you get your head chopped off. That's pretty sweet. I do like that a lot. Uh, when you behead another player, the game will remember their facial appearance and hairstyle, which can be used as a decoration on wall hooks and gun mounts, too. I saw one. In, in, go back and watch the stream, guys. They show it. on. Oh, here it is right there. Never mind. It's right here on a gun port. It's pretty cool. New feature, curses tied to the ex execution of players. When executing a player, you never receive a percentage of their experience points. This will have a cooldown so it cannot be used quickly to drain or transfer experience, and some general experience will be lost when the transfer occurs. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're not intending for this to be an incredible, aggressive, incredibly aggressive feature, which it will be, but something more fun which occurs when executing players. We'll be expanding the curses system more later, more later on. I'm going to just see, I can't wait to see how many people exploit the crap out of this. It's like 20 guys. Look, man, leave the group. Leave the group, all right, and then we're going to execute you, all of you, in order, and I'm going to get all the XP. And then when it cools down, we're going to trade out, okay, okay? And then we're going to get leveled so high so quick, you say you're not even going to be funny, man. Watch, just watch, something like that. This one's also fun. New features, squads, ships of the dam will now come in multiple size variations with very different stats and difficulty levels. I think when I heard this originally months ago, I thought that's, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. You know, I mean, we can, you know, I can go and we can kill the the, 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 little, the little schooners or the little sloops uh, or whatever, and the little smaller ones. But no, ships of the dam will now appear in squads. They'll contain an assortment of various types, including galleons of the dam, brigantines, and schooners of the dam. Uh, these types will be determined uh, will determine their difficulty and loot will scale based on the level of the dam, as well as the type of the dam that the squad is comprised of. For example, a squad containing two galleons is going to reward better than a squad containing five schooners. Excuse me, two galleons. Loot will be rewarded on a per ship basis. The intent behind this change is to make the fight less predictable and more interesting experience out on the seas. We're not planning for them to be killing machines or an Im 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 immense threat. They still maintain a, a, a reduced targeting range, and players have a choice whether to engage in battle or flee. Uh, what they didn't... Wait. However, it should be noted they will now share the same targeting when attacking. Yeah, they did say it. Because in the video, he was like, he was like, yeah, but they all, they're all they all going to fire on you. If one fires on you, they're all going to fire on you fire on you okay so i've got three boats firing on me at the same time as i'm passing by because i popped through a server and they're sitting on the other side of the server and i didn't know yeah that's good that's great and no no just no grape shot no new cosmetic peg legs and hook hands uh that's whatever um this is the cosmetics guys there's there's some new this is the cyclops armor this is the, um, what do they call this? Um, hydra uh, hydra uh, plate. This is the Hydra hide armor. I don't know what they called this. I don't know what, they, what this was, but um, it, it looks cool. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, is this a woman or is this a man? I'm not really sure. I guess it didn't really matter in this day, right? New features, player shops and free ports. Players can set up automated shops in each free port, li listing loot for sale and naming their own gold coin prices. Territory maps, I can't wait to see how, how these are spammed. Um, they've got, I mean, hopefully they have like places where they're locked to. But if they do that, then only a certain amount of people are going to be able to put their, their, uh, their shops down. So they probably won't. So we're going to have just, they're going to be spammed everywhere. Territory maps will now display allies as teal colored. Character creator will now have a height slider to make it easier for you to set your character's desired height. By the way, they did fix that that eye, the eyesight. Um, I was watching Mr. Moon a while back, and and he was he he mentioned this, and I didn't notice it before. But actually, when you when you no matter it used to be like an arc, no matter how tall or short your character was, they always saw the same height, no matter what. So I mean, if you're, you you might be two feet tall, three feet tall, and, and you look like you're looking somebody in the eye. No, but in Atlas, they fixed it. So now if you're shorter than you're, the person you're talking to, you have to look up. 
to actually look at them. I really like that a lot. I really do. I did a good job on that. Um, okay, anyway, so uh, any dead ships uh, from your company appear at, with a unique icon on your map now so you can find your wrecks. That's amazing. Global territory messaging uh, updating. Uh, currently contested claims will be indicated on the mini-map. Players can now mount a sail directly to directly control the sails open and close amount and rotation settings in a more intuitive way. So yeah, if we so if we can do that without without any crew, we can open it, we can close it, we can rotate it. You know, we don't have to get off the helm to do it without having crew. That's 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 a big 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 difference. I mean, crew only costs five coins, but if you forget to you know pay your crew, man, they they mutiny on you. So you know. Um, so anyway, vitamin rebalance. I that's all they're saying about it. Is vitamin rebalance. That's it. Pistol reloading now changed to have the mini game appear back to back rather than through various points in, of the animation. Uh, various spawner adjustments and fixes across the islands. I mean, the pistol reloading thing, man. I don't know. They should get rid of it. Just make it fa slower or faster depending on what your perks are. That's all they need to do. These mini games are stupid, in my opinion. All servers can be set to a home server and have unique spawn points. Players can also respawn on the server they died on. Grappling hook has been revamped. This is cool, man. I saw that. Go back and watch this video. The grappling hook is way cool. It said that it's been revamped, better physics and rappling, uh, re repelling mechanics, and the players will be able to realistically swing using them, like Spider-Man, man. I mean, they finally we can we can actually swing from one ship to another. It looks really good. It looks they looks like they've done a really good job, and also they've they've improved the look of uh, how where the grappling hook is actually gonna go. So like the the longer you swing, the higher it goes, and it shows you. Pretty good. Pretty good. I like that a lot. More changes are coming. We're going to be made in the patch. These notes will be edited to include them. All right. Anarchy update. Oh, is this, no, is this it? I think that's it, guys. I think that's all. Let me just double check, but I think that's it. Yeah. You know, if you guys haven't heard anything with Atlas from me for a while because, you know, the, the other server wiped. I, was, I, I have four episodes that are already recorded, like I said, and I was going to start putting them out, so, and I keep telling you I was going to put them out, but with this... We're going to wait. We're just going to wait. I talked to Monogard. She agrees. We're going to wait. We're going to see what the wipe looks like. I think it's going to be a big cluster. Um, flub, I think it's going to it's gonna be a big mess. I don't know how many people are going to come back. Uh, they're going to wipe everything, which they need to. They have to. Don't Let me reiterate that. They have to. They don't have a choice. So um, don't, get, don't get mad at them for that. But these other changes with this whole, I mean, you tell me what you think. I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it there. Tell me what you think about, about, about this whole revamping thing. And tell me in the comment section below what you think. Um, yes, I know it's a long video, but there's a long, there's a lot of patch notes. So guys, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. And uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, do that right now. As I always say, I am my usual me. You be your usual you. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I get it back into Atlas if it's any good. See you later guys. Bye-bye.